welcome everybody and thank you for joining us for today's Facebook Live Talking Adoption. Uh, my name is Sam. Uh, as we are part of the Fertility Show Summit online this weekend, for the whole weekend, if you're attending that, we'll be there. Uh, because we're joining uh, the Fertility Show this weekend, we thought it would be really useful to discuss uh, adoption as a route to parenthood, uh, in particular in relation to fertility. Um, and I'm really pleased today to be joined by Vicky, who's one of our senior social workers, and Ruth, who's our packed adopter. Thank you so much for joining both of you. Um, I've heard both of you speaking so passionately about this area. Um, I think it's going to be really useful for people to hear um, all this information we're going to share. So Vicky, um, when people are considering all their different options and all the many ways of growing their families, when would you recommend is the best time for them to first inquire with PACT about adoption? There isn't a best first time. I think any time um, to contact our inquirers team, we recognise that adoption is a journey and therefore it might be that, you know, you start by gathering information and you kind of go away with that information and digest it and then, you know, need more, more information. And so our inquirers team are used to people ringing up, um, you know, a number of times before making that commitment to go through for information sharing, you know, in stage one, stage two and approval. So, you know, any, any times people have questions, it's really good to, to kind of get the answers really and, and bounce those ideas off people. So any time to run inquiries, inquiries team is helpful. When did you start to begin to think about adoption? When and why did you start to think about adoption? Um, it's something that was always um, an option for my husband and I, but originally we, we assumed that it would be um, after having birth children um, and then we had our fertility struggles and it became our first option. Um, so... We actually um, first heard about PACT when we when we went to the fertility show. So we were still um, doing fertility treatment and uh, went um, to obviously go and see all the different clinics and things. And then we saw the PACT stall and we just went over and perused. So I think that was, if I'm not mistaken, in 2015. Um, no, 2000. 16 oh it was one of the two years I can't remember and we um spoke to them and everyone was so lovely and we took one of the packs away um and I kept the pack um I remember actually popped it in the spare room somewhere and then when we decided that we were going to stop fertility treatment um we got the pack out um and it was our um and it was our first choice to of of completing our family or to have a family um so we got the pack out and um when we were ready that's when we sort of initiated um contact with pact um my husband is actually he's not adopted but he had legal guardians his godparents became his legal guardians um when he was 11 years old when his birth mother died so it was something that was very close to our hearts anyways um and it just it was just the right thing for us um and um it really was because we've got a superb little girl now <laughs> our daughter this is gorgeous isn't she um yes. why did you decide to choose pact as your adoption agency pretty much from the moment that we stepped in um there we just got such an awesome vibe of them um and also it was really diverse and inclusive and we really really liked that um and also we we'd been to our local authority um probably a few weeks before that for their open evening and um it wasn't as organized um it was a bit more um limited for us um so yeah, packed. We just walked in there and it was so warm and friendly. Um, and as I said, it was inclusive. There were people from all walks of life, all um, religions, all ethnic ethnicities, all sexuality. So, you know, it was something that for us was, um, it just felt right. That's why. 
mentioned finishing your IVF treatments. How, what was that sort of time scale? When did you um, approach PACT after completing those? Um, we, we did leave it um, six months um, and we needed that and we needed time to grieve um, what we've been through, grieve our losses, um, reconnect as a couple as well, um, because fertility treatment does take its toll on relationships. Um, so we did that. And um, I also did some counselling, um, which was incredible and you know I would I would urge anyone that's sort of doing transitioning um from fertility treatment to adoption um or or anything else um to you know think about um going doing counseling even if it's just a few sessions it doesn't resolve problems you know it's you know but it it gives you it's a way to be able to process your feelings and your thoughts about things um, so yeah, we, we did six months of that. We took some time out um, spent time together, spent time with our friends and our family, went on holiday um, and grieved and, 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 and reset. Um, and I wouldn't say that you, um, you don't get over, you know, those sorts of things, but you learn to you accept them and you move on. Um, and, and that's what that, that time was for us. And, and uh, I, you know, I would say it is very much needed. You know, from information events and inquiries, lots of people ask about uh, why we ask for that six months uh, between finishing any treatment um, and, and coming forward to start the adoption process. People are really keen to, to move on often, aren't they? Um, I think it might be useful to hear from a social worker. Why, why do we ask for that? Why do we think that's useful? Any experiences of significant change or an impact of loss um, and bereavement, there's lots of circumstances where sometimes, you know, we say to people, actually, you know, we need to take a break here or take a break before entering into the process. Um, and that's because we recognise that the process is quite demanding um, in the sense of, you know, we're asking people to kind of open up about their life experiences, to reflect on what they've been through. And, you know, sometimes people say, oh, you know, I, I, why do I have to wait? Because it's going to take me six months to be approved and then it's going to take me, you know, a number of months to wait for a child. But, you know, what we recognise is, is the assessment process is actually quite challenging in terms of time and the amount of commitment, the amount of work that goes into to being approved for yourselves. Um, that actually, if, if there are issues, as Ruth said about, you know, that, that space to process, you know, if stuff isn't you know, you don't feel you've got to a point or you don't even, sometimes people don't realise they've not got to a point of being able to process. When we when we talk about grief and loss, sometimes we recognise it as, as you know, there, there's good days and bad days. And, and we, we sometimes look at it as being like waves, you know, and at first those waves are really big when they come, that grief and can knock you over. Um, but in time, the waves get smaller and you learn to manage. And, you know, you, we're, we're not expecting people in six months to have completely moved on. Um, but it's just that recognition to take a pause and actually look at how that's had an impact on you. You know, we we don't expect people to come forward and have resolved everything. Actually, we, we expect people to come forward and be honest and kind of work with us and reflect on on what they've been through. Because what we have to look at is is matching of children who've also been through loss from uh, attachment, uh, lost attachments with foster carers, birth family members and their own developmental trauma from abuse and neglect. Um, so it's really important that we're able to to, ref, to use our own reflections and, and see where we've got our, built our resilience. And really, that's why we kind of say that six months is it's not a you know specific six months and you're done. For some people, it, it may take a bit longer, um, but we kind of almost hold that as the minimum because of that processing that needs to be taken between any significant event or life change. Um, and moving on to the next step in, in, in your life and, and, you know, moving on to your adoption journey. You're nodding in recognition. That seems, sounds familiar, does it? Yeah, it, it, it really does. Um, you know, the, the adoption process is, um, can, you know, it does take a lot out of you. And if you're going from one sort of traumatic situation um, into, not that I'm saying adoption is traumatic, but it takes a lot out of you and it's exhausting. Um, so, you know, jumping from one to the other, um, you know, with a very short space of time in between, 
um, you know, potentially could be damaging for you. Um, so I definitely, um, you know, suggest that time just to just to take a breath, just to take a breath. And um, as you know, as Vicky said, reflect on what's happened um, and come to come to terms with that um, and, accept, you know, accept it and move on um, as best you can. And, um, you know, and you're not asking, you know, they're not asking you to move on and forget um, because you can't do that. But it's move on as best you can. Um, you know, positively, um, the adoption process needs 100% commitment. Um, so you need to be ready for that. So yeah, I, that, that, that is a top tip, actually, just to take that time um, to, 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 to deal with what's happened. And then you can be, you'll be able to move on. There's things people can do during that six months as well, if, uh, uh, if they can feel that that time can be productive reading and research. And we're always asking and recommending that people do volunteering, aren't we? So that could be a, um, a really great time to pick that up. And so things people can do if they, if they want to feel that they're working towards that adoption assessment. Do you agree? Certainly in terms of the volunteering, Sam, I think that's really key. You know, again, when people look at the process and they think six months or with such a long time, but actually once you're in it and, and kind of working through it, that, that six months flies. So to be able to have set up like volunteering and experience, you know, a lot of the process is about reflecting on your experiences with children and, um, you know, how you're going to manage it in, in terms of, you know, growing a new family. And, and so we, we hold volunteering is really key um, to get experience of children and, and actually to be able to have started that before you get into the process means, you know, you can have that a really strong um, set of skills, you know, already um, to then keep working through in, in your assessment. So, yeah, because that can sometimes take a couple of months to set up. So it's worth kind of investing in that early and, and sorting those things out. Ruth, we were just talking about the assessment. How how was it talking about all these previous experiences that are very personal? How was that in uh, talking about to your social worker as part of the assessment? Um, for me, I personally found it quite cathartic. Um, it was good for me to be able to get a different take on it. However, many months down the down the line. Um, you know, and come to some realizations about certain things that had happened. Um, so yeah, for me, I actually found it um, quite therapeutic, um, cathartic, and um, I think it really helped me. I think that also helped me as well, come to terms with it more um, than if we hadn't have talked about it. So um, yeah, it, for, for me, it was really positive and, and, and for my husband as well, because it was important I think when we were going through all the fertility struggles, um, my husband, you know, felt the need to keep strong and, you know, not 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 talk about it too much. So when we got to this point, it was actually nice for him to be able to to talk about his feelings and 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 you know the trauma that he went through, because um, that's not you know it was always focused on me and what I'd been through, but it was actually nice to be able to get that you know get that from him. So it was really positive for us. Why, why, why do social workers uh, talk about these experiences part of the assessment? It's really about we, we need to get to know people during their assessment and, and get to know their experiences. And also we're looking to draw out strengths from people. Um, you know, their understandings are said about, you know, the child's journey and, and being able to think about your own journey and, and how you will support a child who might have been through similar experiences or different experiences. And so it's really key to have kind of got your, your, your thoughts in order about, about how you, you've processed um, things in your life. And, and, and we really, you know, we're on prep group, you know, we talk about the types of needs the children may present with and, and how you're gonna um, support your children. And that, you know, runs throughout the assessment. And then Ruth, after the assessment and the panel and looking at the information on the children who are waiting, uh, after all of that, what was it like to meet your daughter? Oh, it was incredible. Um, she, we fell in love with her instantly. Um, she's an absolute joy. Um, 
it's it's overwhelming it's i mean there's so many emotions it's overwhelming it's nerve-wracking it's scary um but we just fell in love with her and um you know she's perfect and you know we were ready we were really ready to sort of take on the challenge and and you know grow our family and bond with her um and for her to be our daughter and she was from the minute that we we met her she she really was you talked about bonding uh, um what did that look like uh, when you, when she came home and you were settling and building that bond what sort of things did you do and um how did that work yeah i mean i would for me personally the first few weeks i found quite tough and um, just because you're thrown, you know, you, you you don't have nine months to, you know, to bond with this child who, you know, inside you. It's just one day you're not a parent and then the next day you are and you're solely responsible. And at that time, she just turned one. So, you know, she was toddling about. So it wasn't even, you know, a baby baby where she sort of just lay there and um, she was on the move. And um, so, um it was hard work and um, it was quite emotional for me and um, there were times when I just found it so overwhelming um, and I knew that I, I I knew that I loved her but it was just so much for me to take in and I felt guilty that I wasn't feeling more um, so soon on um, but that comes with time and that comes with spending time together as the first sort of four weeks it was just us in this little bubble um, uh, just us together she didn't meet sort of any family and um, very soon on or friends and um, because we needed we needed to, to bond with her um, we did a lot of um, swimming and um, so I could have skin on skin contact with her or she'd come in the bath with me and that really helped as well. That really, really helped. Um, and just spending time with her, getting to know her routines, um, you know, the kind of person that she, you know, kind of child that she was and for her to get to know us and who we were. So it, it it's, you know, it takes time. And um, I would say that if you're not feeling it straight away, that's completely normal. I remember I'd call up my social worker and say, oh, something's wrong because, you know, but there's just so many emotions in one go um, and it really just takes time. I think that at the beginning, I, I felt more like I was babysitting someone else's child than I, you know, than she was my daughter. And that's completely normal. Um, so, you know, if people do go ahead and go through the process and that happens, that's normal and that's fine. Um, I couldn't love her any more now if I tried. Um, and she, you know, she's she's my daughter. She's mine and my husband's daughter. Um, and 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 that's it. I think I think once the first time as well when I felt like I was properly her mum as was when she called me mama. And that yeah, that that was amazing. And I know because you kindly talk to information events that we've done together and um, people have asked you, haven't they, about uh, did it, does it matter that she's not your biological child? And what do you say to that? No, it's it doesn't. That doesn't matter at all. Um, she's ours. And, um, you know, biology, DNA doesn't make a family. It's, you know love makes a family um and that's the way that that's why we, we see it it doesn't it you know I don't even think about that I don't even think the fact that she's not biologically ours um because she is ours um and she actually does look very similar to me and my husband as well so a lot of people don't um you know people don't question it people don't question it at all um so that's nice as well but um yeah, that, that for us, love makes a family. And um, the fact that we don't share the same blood is insignificant. Wow, could say that more powerfully, could you? That's a wonderful sentiment. Uh, Ruth, while we've got you and um, we've got the benefit of your experience, is there anything else that you would like to share? You mentioned a top tip earlier. Is there anything else that you would like people to hear at this point? 
Um, yeah, I think it's just when you um, when you're going through the process, just to take your time. Um, there, it is a lot. I would say so. Um, you know, keep on top of things. Um, and be honest, be honest about your feelings, be honest about um, what's happened in the past. Um, because to be able to be honest about those things and be completely transparent means that you, you know, you are willing um, and committed to moving forward with the adoption process. And um, there's nothing that social workers haven't heard of before and um, there's no need to be embarrassed or think oh if we don't if we you know because this happened you know we we, we won't be accepted into the adoption process and um, that's completely untrue and um, just be honest be transparent and um, and be open be open to taking the advice from the social workers from 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 the adoption agency um, and for us, you know, we did that and, you know, we have this amazing little girl now who's our daughter. And we, as I said, we couldn't love her anymore if we tried. Um, and if you feel that you need more time to process certain things that have happened. So we had a break in between stage one and stage two, just because I felt like I needed a bit more time to sort of process what we'd been through. Um, that is absolutely fine. Um, and if you're feeling that nine times out of ten, you 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 need it. Um, so if there's at any point that things are becoming too much, or you feel like there's some things that have happened with fertility struggles that you still need time to process it, then just say, do you know what? At the moment, we just need to pause um, and take a step back, so I can deal with this, get some counselling, or maybe you just need some time to work it out in your in your own head so um yeah though so those would be my top tips <laughs> really reassuring Vicky is there anything I've missed or anything you would like to add that you think would be useful for people to hear I think it's just echoing what Ruth said you know in terms of that really kind of thinking about what you need it it can seem you know in terms of having children and children in your life and family you know it's a real drive and and sometimes that can kind of over overlay those, those feelings of, of grief and actually it's about being kind to yourself you know if you do need to stop and take time then then do and and you know that that kind of sense of looking after yourself because that's so important that's a real key that you're going to need to learn you know along the way and and particularly when you're parenting and parenting a child who may have issues and 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 really be quite um demanding of your emotional resilience so I think you know being kind to yourself kind of Put the clock to one side you know don't worry about this idea that it's six months so don't worry about this you know another six months to be approved you know really uh, you know be in that time to think you know what what do i need be kind think about processing um the anything that that's that you've been through you know and then you really will be in the best place to to get on with your assessment to to, to work through the the process you know without delays um as ruth said you know we, we can have breaks between stage one and stage two um but you know if if you're able to you know, progress through your assessment and 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 you you kind of dealt and started to process then you know that that's kind of beneficial too um to to be able to to work through and 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 um get to approval so it's it's like hair and tortoise isn't it you know it's not a race actually you know it's about taking the time when you need it because actually that might help you further down the line to, to progress faster if that makes sense oh thank you so much so we've had a question on facebook um i, I so i think um we can ask from both sides so vicky what kind of volunteering with children can i do to help me prepare and then i'll ask ruth uh, what was your experience of volunteering so vicky what Oh, sorry, Tab. Um, so I think, you know, importantly, you know, you, you might or not know kind of the age range of children you're considering and you might need to actually go and have some more experience with children to really kind of get to understanding, you know, what 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 is it like spending lots of time with a two year old or, you know, volunteering in a in a preschool setting? You know, what what's it like spending a lot of time with a load of three year olds or four year olds? 
um, you know, lot, lots of our volunteers um, support children in, in schools or in nurseries or, or in other settings. Um, we have lots of volunteers that go and work in settings where, sorry, volunteer in settings where there are children with additional needs or children, uh, siblings of children with additional needs. And, and that's a really interesting insight into parenting and, and parenting children that have different experiences, um, you know, from, from maybe mainstream experiences, children with additional needs might prepare you for considering a child who is placed that may have additional needs. Um, so it's really good to, to get out there and, and see what opportunities there are. And again, our inquiries team are, you know, really able to, to guide people, kind of help them understand, you know, what, what kinds of volunteering opportunities they need. So just getting out there. And as I always say, you know, you know, demonstrating yourselves, you know, that when you're doing your, your PAR, your perspective, um, when you're doing your assessment, your perspective adopts report, um, that, you know, that you can show that enthusiasm for children, you know, that enjoyment of, of spending time with children, because that's, that's really key, um, you know, in the matching process. So, sorry, I'll go over to Ruth there. Ruth, what, what did you and your husband do for your volunteering? Um, so we did um, two lots of volunteering um, sort of simultaneously um, so we did a um, sort of like a, a, a toddler group and um, that was run by a local um, down at the local church um, so we did that and I think that was more for my husband because he not really spent much time with them um, well yeah no time really with um, younger children and um, so that that was good for him um, I'd, I'd already spent time with children of that age because um, of my nieces um, and then we uh, did uh, volunteering in a contact centre. So it was where um, children would come and spend time with the parent that they didn't live with, which was court ordered. So that was really interesting um, because um, a lot of these children were in sort of really erratic homes and um, they dealt with um, sort of the breakup and then ongoing issues between the parents. Um, sometimes there were children that came to see both parents and actually lived with other birth family. Um, so you could see um, sort of the fractured relationships, the fractured families there. Um, so that was really, really, really interesting for us because we knew that we would be adopting a child that would have come you know that more than likely would have been taken away from birth parents and that would have had some sort of fracture within the family so that was really that was really beneficial for us and there was an adopter talking at an information event last week and he was talking about the the importance of play that he got um from from the volunteering and how useful that was in terms of um, seeing children's expression through their behaviour and, and their needs coming out in that play. So, yeah, really useful. Thank you. So we had another question uh, for Vicky. Would existing children in the family, future siblings, have anything to do to prepare for the assessment? Yeah, so as part of the um, assessment process, the social worker um, will meet with your children and, you know, spend some time with your children observe you with your children and also you know talk to your children about their views and, and their understanding of adoption in, a, in an age appropriate uh, way uh, you know we've got resources and books to recommend uh, for you working through with their ch your children so it's kind of an approach where we kind of work together in terms of children preparing themselves I think you know that's just about thinking about children who um, spend time with other children um, you know so that when we ask a child you know what well, what, what's your thoughts on, on, on an adopted child joining your family? They might be able to reflect on, on you know, their experience of spending time with other children. Um, so, you know, they do that through school potentially, but also, you know, through clubs and groups and interest. And just even speaking to your child, you know, really kind of asking them about their, their views, about having a brother or sister. And, and just what, you know, another thing in terms of, you know, working through the, the, the process and, and the time um, that it takes, you know, having those conversations with your child quite early on in, in the process, you know, before entering into stage one and stage two is really helpful. 
um, because you, then you've got time and space to kind of really kind of get some grounding in there with you with your children and what their views are and, and how how they think about you know life you can be really surprised when you talk to children about you know what they think adoption is and what life what, what what's the most important thing about another child joining their family so you know I think as an adopter starting those those conversations early you know don't don't leave it until the day the social worker's walking in and says oh I'm talking to your child now and you say oh I just need a word you know <laughs> you know it's, it's good to spend that time with your child and preparing them and and getting their views you know you know first and, and sharing with them and children as I say can be really surprising you know and and, and interesting in in what they think and um and as we say going through the assessment process we, we we spend time talking to children we spend time talking to children on their own and and with you as a parent and observing games and activities and and there's there's lots lots of things we get up to but yeah just just getting children like like with yourselves you know the idea of volunteering you know what what groups your children in and talking to them about how they find those groups and how they find school I think that's it for the questions. Uh, so thank you so much, Vicky and Ruth. I really do appreciate you spending the time um, sharing your thoughts and experiences and particularly to you, Ruth, being so candid about your experiences. I know you're passionately a champion for, um, for adoption and also for um, uh, talking about our human experiences and that's who we are isn't it so um, I just want to highlight to people that Ruth did a fabulous um, article with the Suns magazine fabulous uh, and you can find that through our website uh, www.paccharity.org and obviously on there we've also got so much information uh, if you want to find out more about adopt adopting with us and I would also just recommend if you've got any further questions to call our uh, incredible inquiries team. Uh, they're all so passionate and dedicated and uh, I, there are not many questions they cannot ask answer. So um, please uh, call them if you've got any questions on 0300 456 4800. And uh, just time to say thank you very much for joining us and uh, we'll see you for the next session. Have a lovely uh, rest of your week, everyone. Take care. Bye.